Hey there, gang. We are going to take a look at the rest of the books in this box. In the last video, we took uh, took a look at the first half. This uh, this video, we're going to crack into the rest and take a look. I still don't know what those books are. I, I only know the first half. I haven't taken a look at the second half. I have I've been very patient, waiting for you to come along. <laughs> and so we will we will take a look now. We will discover what is in here together. So if you like comic books, stick around. We're going to have some fun. Hey there, Bobby. Welcome to Shanghai. My name is Duke, and this is an unboxing video. Real quickly, the spiel. Uh, most of you know this already. If you've seen any of these videos, I am grading these books for sale on eBay. The username is .com Comics. When I get a box of books to grade, I, I never know what's in it, and so it's always fun You know, when I crack open the box to just turn on the camera and let you have a little fun discovering right alongside me what I will be grading. So let's uh, let's not waste any time. Let us jump right into it. We did the first half of this box in the last video. This time we're going to uh, go through the second half of the box. And uh, look at this. We've got some strange tales here. 111. That's pretty early, I think. I think the Human Torch series started in 109. I might be misremembering that. Or maybe a little earlier. But I think Doctor Strange's first appearance was 110. He didn't appear in every issue at first. He was kind of sporadic at first. So I don't think this actually has Doctor Strange in it. This one, though, 114, this is kind of a big deal. This was a test run for bringing back Captain America. You know, of course, Captain America had kind of gone by the wayside in the 40s. He came back for a brief run in the 50s. About the time that the Adventures of Superman TV show was big and Marvel publisher Martin Goodman thought he had a deal for a Submariner TV show uh, and, and to sort of goose that along, he brought back Subby, Cap, and Human Torch all for brief runs in the comics. And I don't know, they did half a dozen, ten issues or so until it was clear the uh, TV deal wasn't happening. <laughs> And apparently they must not have sold that well either. But anyway, so in the 60s, once the Marvel Age of Comics gets going, they bring back this kind of test run here just to see how the kids would react to Captain America. And this ends up being just somebody wearing Cap's suit. Uh, I can't remember exactly who he is, but here's 115. A little crossover with uh, Spider-Man. Is it a Ditko cover? No, it's not. That looked a little Ditko-ish to me at, at first, as did this. And maybe those were drawn by Ditko. I'll have to look it up. But this, that's not. Human Torch Battles the Thing. And this was its kind of a weird wash tone effect here on the thing. But when, uh, when they broke off the Human Torch into his own series in Strange Tales, and that happened pretty quickly, uh, the Fantastic Four was only on about issue 7, 8, 9. I'll have to look it up see which one exactly. Uh, but pretty early, they broke off the Human Torch into his own series, I guess because the Torch had been a big deal in the 40s, and, uh, and of course he was a teenager, so I think Stan Lee expected him to be the breakout character. And the Strange Tales... Book, the circulation didn't really pick up any or not enough uh, to warrant the Human Torch having a solo series. And when it became clear that it was actually the Thing who was the breakout character, they brought him over. So he, he guest stars in this issue, and then I believe with the next issue, they co-starred together until eventually they got kicked out of the book and replaced by Nick Fury. Here is Hawkman number three. Some great Murphy Anderson art. Justice League of America number six. I believe that's the first Professor Amos Fortune. Here's number 31. Hawkman joins the Justice League. So it took a while. It took a while for Hawkman to get his invite. Justice League wasn't something that just everybody joined back in the day. Number 32. Here's Justice League, number 33. 
Here is just a piece of cardboard for some random reason. Sea Devils. We had a stack of Sea Devils in the last, uh, the last box, or the first half of this box, I should say, the last video. I'm going to guess this is an early issue. Is it number one? It might be. The reason I say it's early is because there's no issue number on the cover. Let's see. It is. So that is Sea Devils number one with a washstone cover. There are people who who collect these washstone covers that DC did at about this time. And I see there was a piece of cardboard on the other side of that book as well. So when they packed this box, they were hoping to keep that one protected. Here's Daredevil 38. It looks like there's two books in here. 37. Daredevil 25. This is the first appearance of the uh, Mike Murdoch persona, which, unlike today, wasn't an actual different person. It was just Matt Murdoch pretending to be his own twin brother to uh, help protect his secret identity. But after several decades, Mike Murdoch has come back and is actually a, a real live boy. Here is Thor number 158. I don't know if they were stuck for cover ideas. That just looks like some clip art. <laughs> the People Breeders! <laughs> I don't know why that just strikes me as funny. <laughs> I think this is... Um, this might be uh, Kirby working out some ideas that would eventually become the Eternals, maybe? I don't know. I have no idea. But the People Breeders just struck me as funny. When falls a hero. <laughs> it's funny. The God of Thunder versus a guy swinging a crowbar. <laughs> Not a lopsided fight at all. That's, that should be pretty evenly matched. I I can't imagine how, how it would not take all day to settle that contest. All right, next stack. It's more Strange Tales. 117. This is an early, an early Doctor Strange appearance. The eel fighting the Human Torch. And here's finally getting some love on the cover. 118. And remember, we looked at 117 where the thing go guest starred, and now, now they are. Starring together. 119. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe he got a couple more on his own. I know it all, I just can't remember it all at once. <laughs> Human Torch meets the Iceman. That might be uh, Iceman's first appearance outside of the X-Men title. Not 100% sure on that. 121. The torch. And Doctor Strange. Three against the torch. 122. Now the thing comes back. So the thing was in a couple issues, then he went away, then they brought him back. So they were they were just testing things out. They realized. They realized here we go 124. I think the thing I think the thing's sticking around for a while at this point. They realized who was bringing the money. They they knew who made it rain. It's Submariner. 125. Whoops, here's just change of pace for you. Uncanny X-Men 201, first appearance of Cable, albeit as a wee baby. X-Men number 22. First appearance of the Swordsman, Avengers number 19. And we're back to, oh, actually, we already saw this issue. Somebody autographed this one for us. 
W H E T E scribble scribble. Huh. Booster Gold! Yay! Number one, first appearance of Booster Gold. 1986. This seems like to me just yesterday. You know, <laughs> I don't know where time went, but I, I still think of Booster Gold as a as a modern invention, as a as a new hero. But 86, 96, 06, 8, Christ, he's 35 years old now. You know, wow. It's just hard to believe that Booster Gold has been around that long. This is, holding this book now, it's kind of like, you know, when I started collecting books in, well, 1976 is when I was kind of actively collecting, you know, spending all of my allowance money on comic books. And uh, I was probably, what, eight or nine? And uh, <laughs> so it'd be like, you know, then if somebody had given me a book from the 40s, you know, uh, it just would have been like just a whole crazy, unbelievable thing. And here it is. I'm holding a, a book with the same passage of time from when it came out to now. And it's just like, yeah, that's a new book. <laughs> and that, but this will do well, though. I bet you that'll go for 30 or 40 bucks on, uh, on the old eBay. This is uh, an Adam Hughes cover. A little bit of cleavage action there. Catwoman 51. And Christ, even this is 15 years old. That's 2006. Here's a solo appearance of the uh, Monica Rambo Captain Marvel, who will be appearing in the WandaVision Disney Plus show that's coming right up. But I have not noticed any real price action movement on eBay of any of her appearances. And you would think they would be. Usually, you, you get this big spike just before something comes out if there's a, a new character in it. And maybe it's because she appeared in the Captain Marvel movie, you know, even though it was as a kid. I don't know. So I, I would actually be surprised if this brings 10 bucks on eBay. Which, obviously, Sean thinks it will if he put it in here. Spawn number one. So <laughs> Every box I crack has got at least one of these in it, it seems like. There's a million of these. And so this, I mean literally a million. Uh, and, and this really defies the law of supply and demand. As many of these as there are in the marketplace, this should be going for, you know, a buck a book. But this will still bring, depending on condition... 15, 20 bucks. This one's got a little damage up here at the top, so we'll say the low end. You know, that might be like, you know, 12 or 15 bucks, but still. Here's the Punisher's first ongoing series. Here is, I've seen a bunch of these lately and they've been beat to hell. This one's in pretty good shape. Tales of the Teen Titans 44, so that is the first appearance of Dick Grayson. In the Nightwing persona, Savage She-Hulk number one, and that's a book that does really pretty well. It was a long time you could hardly give that book away, but all right. Now, based on these bags, I bet you the rest of this is going to be all strange tales. just because these bags look like the bags that came earlier. And some of them are, Christ, this has probably been in this bag since, and I don't think this is even a comic book bag. Well, maybe it is. But that bag's almost as old as the book. 142. So Nick Fury is kind of taken over by this point. Kick the Human Torch to the curb. There's a Human Torch, 126, with the thing. Again, they had to move the thing in because old Torchy wasn't cutting it by himself. Mystery villain. 
Who or what is he? Golly, I don't know. From a moon. <laughs> and until the movie, I, I, I swear to you, I didn't really know how to pronounce that. It just, I just sort of, it was one of those things that I just sort of, it's kind of like Mr. Mixtelpitalik. You know, I just kind of skip over it in my brain as I was reading. It was just Mr. Min. It was the same same way with Dormammu. But since the movie, I know how to say it. Wow. You've got basically everybody in this book, huh? There's that terrible trio again that really aren't that terrible. They're all like circus freaks. 130. Doctor Strange finally getting the better part of the cover. This one does well just because it mentions the Beatles and, you know, talking about the Beatles wigs. 131. One thirty two. The MMMS wants you. Strange Tales one thirty three. The Human Torch and the Ever Loving Thing. Ooh, this book's a little ugly. This is the first appearance of Deathlock. Astonishing Tales number twenty five. And here we have uh, another copy in much better condition. Somebody thought the book was worth about two bucks. And I would say, based on the feel of this bag and the look of that sticker, that uh, <laughs> that probably was an accurate price at the time. This should go for much more than that. All right. Let's see what we have here. Some more Strange Tale action. There's 152. 153. Clea must die. No, not Clea. Enter the Watcher. 134. And here it is. So this is the uh, 134, 135. So this is finally, even with the thing, just wasn't making it happen. So Human Torch got, got his ass kicked to the curb. And here's the first issue starring Nick Fury. Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Not Sergeant of the Howling Commandos, but leader of his own... James Bond-esque super spy organization. And it is, in fact, the greatest action thriller of all time. Just in case you were unaware. It's 136. 137. 138. Looking kind of Wally Woodish here, but. One thirty nine. The Brave Die Hard. Yippee Kaye, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> the end of Hydra. I bet, I bet they come back. I bet you that's not the actual end. Operation Brain Blast. Hmm. There you go. What do you think of that? All right, last stack. This is this is the end of this box. And actually, well, these bags are ugly. These are some ugly ass bags. One thirty-five. Do we see that one already? Maybe not. 156. Introducing Zom. Not Zot, but Zom. Sands of Death, 158. 
See now, that, oh, well, that's just a random dirty bag. Captain America, the great Captain America. 159, 160. Rando piece of cardboard. <laughs> I remember, I remember Brian and Kelly and Scott. You go back uh, several videos ago now at this point, there was a, a bunch of books, and I don't know if, I can't remember if those were Spider-Mans as well or something else, but they were all like this. They were either coverless or beat to hell. And this is Spider-Man number, oh, this is 121. So this is the death of Gwen Stacy. So this is kind of a biggish deal. But I always wonder, because obviously they're in two different hands and two different markers. I always wondered, okay, was did these books first belong to Kelly and Scott? It, were they a couple first off? <laughs> or a boyfriend and uh, a girl and her boyfriend or a guy and his girlfriend or siblings or whatever. And then mom made him share with, with uh, Brian. Brian's looks like a kid's hand. So maybe Brian wrote his name first and he was the younger brother. And then maybe Kelly and Scott were his older siblings. Took his book and wrote their name in it. Pissed him off. <laughs> I just, I just I just have this whole this whole soap opera thing in my head <laughs> of Brian and Kelly and Scott. Maybe they were a couple and Brian Brian stole the books and wrote his name in them just to spite them. Maybe he was jealous. I mean, I don't know. There's just so many possibilities. And so yeah, back back several videos ago, there was uh there was a stack of these Brian Kelly and Scott books. Here's 122, and that probably got the same names inside them. Let's take a look. Yep, there you go. Brian, Kelly, and Scott. There's a uh, first appearance of Beta Ray Bill. This is not in very good shape at all. Holy crap. I can't believe we're actually going to try and sell this as a single. That's, that's pretty nasty. It's, it, these look like scorch marks. It looks like somebody burnt it. I, I, I'm curious. Look at the back of this. Holy fuck, turkeys. Total fucking craziness. That back cover is, I think, completely detached. You get two different boards in there. I'm curious just to see what this sells for. I mean, you know, we will list all the damage in the description... We'll have scans, so it won't be a, you know, and it'll be probably a 0 0.5, if that. <laughs> so it won't be a surprise to whoever buys it, but I'll be real curious to see what someone pays for it. What do you think? What would you pay for uh, Thor 337, first appearance of Beta Ray Bill, in this condition? That's crazy. All right. Some flying Porsche action. 144. 145. Strange Tales. Lo, the eggs shall hatch. <laughs> Melodramatic. <laughs> All right, so this, this I believe, let's take a look. I think I'm right. I think I'm right. Yep. That's Kirby. I mean, not Kirby. Ditko. And see? Same as with Ditko's last Spider-Man, which was Amazing Spider-Man 38. He quit that title. Famous, famously, um, Ditko had uh, had it up to, up to, you know, as far as he could take with Stan Lee. And so he quit, uh, he quit Spider-Man, he quit Doctor Strange, quit Marvel, both books end with the, uh, the lead character kind of walking, walking off into the sunset. But Stan Lee, <laughs> and here's the thing, and I, don't take this as a knock on Stan Lee. If you love Stan Lee, 
because we are all different things to different people. We are sometimes different things at different times to different people. We're sometimes different things at different times to the same people. So, you know, this isn't really a knock on Stan Lee. And anything that I say on Stan Lee, don't let it dilute. You know, if you just love and idolize the man, don't let anything I say diminish that. But at the same time, <laughs> see, because I know this was on purpose. You know, by all the different things that Stan Lee said about Ditko, uh, you know, before the, the big split, uh, <laughs> The last Ditko story, and what what does what does Stan Lee put on the cover? Because this came out after Amazing Spider-Man 38, um, not by much, but you know this was this was the last Ditko at Marvel for a long, long, long time. Certainly as long as Stan Lee was in charge. <laughs> and Stan Lee puts on the cover the end at last. <laughs> so Stan was. Whatever you want to say, good or bad about him, I think you can say objectively that Stan was kind of a passive-aggressive dick to Steve Ditko. <laughs> and I think I mentioned in the last video, I just got the hardcover um, uh, Ditko biography, Ditko Shrugged. I'll be reviewing that in an upcoming video, so if that turns you on, by all means, be on the lookout for that. But uh, <laughs> anyway... Um, what are your thoughts about the, the Ditko Lee feud? Who do you think was right? Who do you think was wrong? Is there a right? Is there a wrong? You know, one thing I learned from that biography, there wasn't really a lot, honestly, new in it for me, but there's a passage in there and it's not cited or sourced to anything. So maybe the author made it up for all I know, but it claims that Stan Lee is actually the one who introduced Ditko to Ayn Rand. So Maybe he's partly responsible for their falling out uh, as, as Ditko became enamored of that philosophy and decided that uh, Stan Lee most certainly did not <laughs> did not measure up <laughs> to the uh, archetype of the, uh, the hero man. But there it is, the last Ditko, the end, at last, Stan Lee being a passive-aggressive dick. <laughs> All right, just a mo couple more books. 147, and oh, look at this bag, this bag is awful, look at this, look at it, I mean there's, there's dirt and crap in it, I hope that, I think that's, that's somebody's pot, <laughs> that's not pieces of paper, um, I mean the book's not in wonderful shape, but it's not brittle, I don't know how something got in there, this thing's been rolling around in the mud, 30 cents, 1974, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, all right, 148, enter Kalu, or Kalu, <laughs> the Big Bang Theory, what is it, Warriors of Ka'a, this is enter Kalu, the end of aim, well, just like Hydra we talked about, this bag is Christly as well. And this bag also has got dirt in it. Again, dirt or somebody's leftover pot. Someone was reading Doctor Strange and getting stoned. I don't know what that's... Do you see that? Who, who does that to a comic book? All right. Exit Kalu'u, enter Uma. That's 150. And the last book in this box, Strange Tales, number 151. Moment of Overkill. Well, I hope this video wasn't overkill for you. I hope you uh, had some fun. Uh, any thoughts that you have on what we saw or anything I had to say or anything at all, please do leave it in the comments below. Please do like, share, subscribe, do all the things. You know how YouTube works. We'll be back with another video soon. Until then, goodbye, good luck, and please be good to each other.